is beautiful. Folks, we now move to the call of worship. And those who are able, invite you all to stand. Turning to our bulletin for the response of call of worship. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration, and it was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All the way to their own town to see registered. Joseph also went from the town to Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David and all of that land, because he was descended from the house of the name of the David. He went there to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the guest place. In that region there were shepherds living in fields, keeping watch over their cloth by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he bears. Let us join the angels in singing, and we turn over in our hymn books to number 277, entitled, Heart the Herald Angels Sing. <laughs> Okay, our scripture reading tonight is Titus 2, 
Now we have time for the children, and as we prepare for the children to come up front, we sing a verse of Jesus loves me. Jump and 
ride to, to Bethlehem, they had to travel by donkey. And it was a long, hard trip for Mary because Mary was expecting a baby. So they traveled by donkey and they went to Bethlehem. So when they got there, they didn't have reservations at the Muppertel <laughs> because there wasn't one. And they were, they were looking for some place to stay. They kept knocking on doors and asking if there was somewhere that they could stay. And no one had room for them except one man said, well, I don't have a place for you to stay, but you can stay where my mom will stay in the back of the house. So he took them to the back of the house, and they settled down for the evening. And while they were resting, Mary had her baby in the, in the manger, in the table, in the back of the house. So, um, if Mary didn't have a bed or anything, so she could lay them. So, so they put them in the manger where the cattle came out of. And they brought them up and they laid them down in the, in the back of the house. And an angel was, he appeared in the sky to the shepherds. The shepherds were out in the field. And an angel came in the sky and they told them, don't be afraid, because if we walked out that door tonight and the angels were up in the sky, I'd be a little afraid of them. But, <laughs> but they said, don't be afraid, because today the Savior is born, the, the one that we've been waiting for. So the angels led the shepherds to where the baby was. And there were wise men way off in the east. And actually, their journey started long before the night when Mary and Joseph had Jesus. And they thought they, they were astronomers. Do you guys know what astronomers are? They study the stars. They study the stars, that's right. And the, that a star shone way up in the sky. And that night, it followed, it kept following and following, and it stayed above the stable. To let everyone know that Jesus is born. Isn't that exciting? Could you imagine being one of the shepherds, the first people to be at the stable? Would that be pretty exciting? Because not there's nobody knew, did they? Nobody knew until Jesus was born. And that's pretty the way it is with Jesus today. Jesus told us that he's going to come back, but we don't know what day or what hour or when. Tomorrow. It could be a million years from now. Some people thought it was last week. <laughs> so we need to prepare our hearts. As we've been preparing all the Advent for the coming of Jesus. We need to remember that he's going to come again. Let's stay with it. Gently put these back. I don't know. I just go back to my tree when I get home. <laughs>
afternoon. <coughs> Good. Tonight, folks, I, I'd like to advocate we are all shepherds. You know, when you're talking about the shepherds coming there, we're, we're all shepherds. And, and I believe that. Now, at, at first that might not sound like a grand compliment once you begin to think about it. You see, shepherds were loners. They, they had few friends. And the companions they had all day long, all they said was, bah! <laughs> Shepherds walk around with boots caked in sheep dip, and, and they don't smell like the Christmas popori. And shepherds are, are the last to make it any party or, or social scene. And a couple of reasons. One, the animals keep them busy all night and day, and the other is that they didn't smell so good. But I think you and I are, are shepherds tonight. We are shepherds not because of the dirty boots or, or loneliness or a lack of social status. We're shepherds. And, and I, I wish to tell you why I think we're all the shepherds. The most amazing detail that Luke tells you about this birth is that after Mary gave birth to the baby, they put him in a feeding trough. Now, now you heard a little bit going on here in the, the kids' message about they were in the back of the house. Well, and, and maybe you might have caught when uh, we were reading the call of worship that the word in appeared, but I said guest place. Uh, I am correct on the Greek. Yeah, I read the Greek. I study that stuff. The, the word for in does not occur there. The word means guest place. In Bethlehem, there was no microtels. There were no, no, no motels in Bethlehem this day and age. It was a nice little village. All these little houses were there, looked like little rectangles, and, and they had a back door, and, and, the, and the, in the backyard it was all fenced, and that's where they kept their animals. The night they brought them into the woods, the thieves wouldn't get them, and they barred the door. And so they had part of the back of the house was an animal pen, and, and the manger divided the back of the house from the living room. And then there was the family room and the guest place. It was the time of the census. The guest place was full, but nobody in Bethlehem is going to turn away a pregnant lady and her young husband. Nobody's going to do that. That, that. that would be a terrible insult to anybody in Bethlehem. They would find room for Mary and Joseph. And the room was right next to the manger, or, you know, like we do, the guest bedroom's full, so we put them up on the couch. That's what's happening there. So Mary gave birth to the baby, and right next to where they're staying is the manger. And she puts the baby in a feeding trough. That's what the manger is. It's not a cradle. It's where you put the donkey chow and the hay for the sheep. Every peasant house in Bethlehem had one. They all brought their livestock in for the night. That way the thieves and wolves will not steal their animals. The manger separated the family living area from the animal area. And into this room divider food box, Mary and Joseph placed the very Son of God. And in the midst of true human struggle and strife, in the presence of love and tears, in a place between people and animals, the lowly manger crib, God bless Jesus, come down to the earth. It's not incarnation to grandeur. But folks, it is the incarnation of the Lord God Almighty. Short is a holy night. And I don't think it was a quiet night. Outside the hills, the, the shepherds walk over to flocks that are too large to herd inside any house. Nearby, but not close enough to hear Mary's labor or the baby's first wail, the shepherds miss most of the noise of birth. And many of you folks can tell about the noise of birth. It's not a quiet scene. And, and if the, the, the mother is not yelling and screaming, the dad is saying, breathe, breathe. You know, it's not quiet. A lot of noise. And the shepherds would miss all of that. They're, they're sitting out in the hills, gazing at the stars. Except something. Something came to them and said, go find your book. Go and find your dream. Put away your fear and go and find your joy. The long expected one is here. And this is your sign. You will find a newborn king born into lowly estate, cradled in a feed box, 
resting his head on hay and wood. And with noisy excitement, they clambered into the village of Bethlehem, looking for that sign from the angels. And I, I don't think they tiptoed him down. They didn't do that. And they, and they really didn't know what to expect. They could hardly believe that God would lay the Messiah in, in a manger in that little tiny town of Bethlehem. But for some holy and heavenly reason, they rushed into the town and they looked for the baby whose crying may have alerted them to the right house to knock on the door. Tonight, you're all shepherds. For some holy and heavenly reason, you have noisily come into the sanctuary looking for your Savior. You enter this house of God hoping to find the long-expected incarnation of the Lord God Almighty. You may not always know why you end up here on December 24th with candles glowing and faces smiling and voices singing. It doesn't matter. You're all shepherds. Something holy and heavenly moved you to come and assign, find the sign of your long-expected hope here in the sanctuary. You're all shepherds. Noisily running with haste to find the Christ child once again. God laid Jesus in a feed box. God put Jesus in a manger, which is in the middle of the first century Bethlehem house. God laid Jesus in the midst of your house. In the middle of your blood and tears and troubles. God, Christ comes to you tonight. Not because of so much gold and tinsel, but because of your great need and your great hunger for God. God incarnates Jesus right where you need him. God puts Jesus into your homes, into your noisy nights, and into the place where animals and humans live. With shepherds, you come to gaze upon the Christ, born tonight, not into a lowly manger, but into a lowly people. You gather as the church, always to gaze upon Jesus as your gracious and merciful Lord and Savior into ordinary life, surrounded by ordinary people, God becomes incarnate. This night may be holy, yet it is filled with things as common as noise and clamor and bread in a cup. God arrives right into the midst of your real trouble and tears, into your screams and yells, into your pain and hurt, God comes into the real world with a real Savior for all real people. You're all shepherds tonight, folks. And like shepherds, you glorify God by doing your best job tending the sheep, helping your neighbor, and using your gifts. Throughout it all, you keep singing that angel song, Glory to Himself the day of glory to God in the highest. You are shepherds, and you've come to the right place. All glory be to God. Amen. Let's now turn to hymn number 281. And if you're able, please stand, and let's sing what child says.
we be loved and free. Let us say this beginning with, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He is sitting in heaven and sitting on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to the house to quit in the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of our lives.
church was to celebrate communion by a, a very special action called intention. And that's the formal word, intention. Since the Reformation, this practice has increased in use. Presbyterians have found great meaning in, in dipping the bread in the cup and remembering our Savior. Intention means to take a piece of bread and dip it into the <coughs> cup of juice and eating it. It's much like dipping a cookie in a glass of milk. Tonight, I'm going to invite all these shepherds to noisily come up the, the aisle and to, to stand here and, and take a piece of bread that the elders up here and, and take a piece of bread and, and an elder and I will be holding the cup and, and they'll be on either side here, so whichever way you go, you, you can do this. And, and you take a piece of bread and, and you dip it into the cup and then you eat bread. And when you see the, the body and the blood mingled together with eyes of faith, you will notice that this is Christmas Eve. And you might even catch it tied in your heart, a glimpse of the baby in the manger. On this night of the incarnation of God, the birth of Christ, we remember the reason that Jesus came to this earth, to forgive sin and to grant eternal life by the action of the cross and resurrection. Tonight, as you come up front, you take a piece of bread and dip it into the cup. Remember Jesus. Tonight, remember Jesus and praise God for our salvation. Folks, this is the joyful feast for the people of God. On this Christmas Eve, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus to Mary and Joseph, remember that people came, came from all over the world to adore the Christ child and sit at table in Holy Communion. This is the Lord's table. And our Savior invites those who trust in him and those who repent of their sins and those who come in anew to, to live as followers of Christ to come to the table and to share in this feast which he has prepared. This means that all those who are active church members, communicants in good standing in any Christian church, and baptized children are invited to celebrate the sacrament. We, we have an open communion here. You're all invited. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Join me in prayer. Eternal God, holy and mighty, it is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise and to worship you in every place where your glory abides. In sending us your son Jesus to be born to Mary, the word became flesh, and we have seen a new and radiant vision of your glory. In him, we have been brought out of the darkness and into your marvelous light. Oh, holy God, how wonderful is the work of your hands. When sin had scarred this world, you entered into covenant to renew the whole creation. Through countless generations, your, your chosen people have hungered for the bread of freedom. From them, you raised up Jesus, your son, the living bread, in whom ancient hungers are satisfied. <coughs> Jesus healed the sick, though he himself would suffer. He offered life to all sinners. As we look to Jesus, both in the cradle and on the cross, we pray for those who are in the hospital, those recovering from surgery, those suffering illness, those cold and confused, those deeply in grief, those who are hungry and hurting. In sending Christ, the light of the world, merciful God, you revealed your glory to the nations. You sent a star to guide seekers of wisdom to Bethlehem that they might worship Christ. Your signs and witness in every age lead people from every place to worship him. We praise you that in him we become your children, baptized into your service. Eternal God, let your Holy Spirit move in power over us and over these earthly gifts of the bread and the cup that they may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ, and that we may become one in him. May his, glory, may his coming in glory find us ever watchful in prayer, strong in truth and love, and faithful in the breaking of bread. Listen now, everlasting God, as we together pray the prayer that Jesus commanded us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup and blessed it, gave it to the disciples. He said, this is my body, this is my blood, which is shed for, for you, for the remission of sins. All of you drink of it. And now, the elders will come forward. <coughs> shepherds and angels and all of your people in heaven and earth. You have fed us with the bread of life and renewed us through your service. Help us who have shared Christ's body and received his cup and to be his faithful disciples so that our daily living may be a part of the life of your kingdom. And our love, be your love reaching out into the world, into the life of this world. For we pray it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, if you uh, return to hymn number 250, the little town of Bethlehem, beautiful hymn, let's sing that one.
The emphasis upon baby Jesus being the light of the world. The light began as a small flame in a tiny manger, and so the light candle is cradled by the Advent wreath. It is from this candle that the light will spread throughout this congregation and throughout the world. Soon we're going to stand up and stand in a circle. Now, we'll please take the candles with you. And that song she needs about five of night. And folks, I'm going to soon go over here to the candle and, and take the light off the past pipe candle and then start over here with the first, first light. And, and please be aware that there's a, a good way to light candles and there's a way to there's wax everywhere. The, the good way is that, that when the person has a fire, always keep your candle upright. And the person that, who needs the flame, come in like this and then turn up. Never tilt a lighted candle or the hot box will just pour everywhere. And some of you have some very beautiful Christmas clothes on. I really don't want wax on those clothes. And when, we, when we're lighting all the candles, we'll sing Silent Night. And, and when we get around the, the church, we're going to turn all the lights out and uh, put the flames like the, the sanctuary. So I'm going to ask that the, uh, you all stand up and circle us entire. <laughs>
and you may extinguish your light and your candles and go back to the pews and pick up the hymn book and let's sing joy to the world.